man, that's, that's a lot of guns, huh? Okay, so Borderlands 2 has a lot of guns. Maybe not that many, but still. If you're just starting out with the game, all the guns, gear, and quests can be a bit overwhelming. So I get a lot of people in my streams asking for advice on how to level their character. So with this guide, I want to make a video that people can reference if they are struggling. Now before we get into the actual guide, while Claptrap is talking about some nonsense, I want to get some things out of the way first. Since I play on PC, this guide was made with that in mind. You can do everything I show and talk about on console, it may just be a bit slower. Also, as the title says, this guide goes all the way to overpower level 10, which means that this guide assumes that you have all the content installed for this game. I will also be using a trick that you can do on PC. There's a keybind to instantly drop your equipped gun out of your hands, and since the game is coded in a way where every gun you find in the world has a full magazine, you can use this to instantly reload my gun. If you are missing something and wonder how you can change the route, feel free to ask in the comment. The next thing. I changed my game a bit. Nothing that changes gameplay of course, but just so you don't get confused. I have the black outlines disabled, just because I think it looks better. I disabled loading screens, and with that, all pre-rendered cutscenes, because I can't be bothered watching the same cutscenes over and over again. Also, I'm running something called DXVK, which is just an open-sourced, Vulkan-based translation layer for Direct 3D, which increases the performance of the game. But speaking of gameplay, I want this guide to be usable by everyone, which is why I have my badass rank disabled and will not be using any world drops that I get. If I use a legendary, it will be because I've specifically said to farm it in the guide. I will also be doing some skips here and there, I will be showing them off, but if you can't be bothered to learn them, you can always go the intended way. It really won't change much other than being a bit slower of course. I also want to encourage everyone who is new to the game to go out and explore it on your own first. This is just my personal route to get to the end game in a more streamlined manner. Okay, so now that we got that out of the way, let's get to the guide. In this video I'll be covering all the things I do in normal mode with Maya. Enjoy. Now the first little skip is actually already done when entering Claptrap's place. I walk in front of his platform to activate a trigger, I jump on the stalagmite to hit the safe station through the wall. Then, once Claptrap starts talking, I skip his dialogue by using the echo each of the four original vault hunters start with. After turning in the mission I safe quit to spawn right at the safe station, skipping more of Claptrap's animation. This is another thing I should note. I will be using safe quits often to skip dialogue or avoid running back to a location. As with the skips mentioned in the intro, you don't have to do it. It's just faster than running back and waiting. Once we're back in the game, I go to the Digitruct peak map and complete the first quest to get to level 3. Also check all of the containers for some early grenades and high level guns, which you can sell for early money. Once I did that, I go back to the main game and follow Claptrap all the way to Knuckle Dragger. I pick up the revolver he drops, and after getting the eye, I save quit twice. Now we're on our way to meet Sir Hammerlock. Nothing here should cause many issues. Once you've repaired Clap and got the bounty board up and running, we'll get the This Town Ain't Big Enough side mission. We do this to unlock the mission after it, because Bad Hair Day is the one we're really after, since it gives a nice sniper as a reward. But first we make our way to Boom Boom. After clearing out Camp 1 and 2, I do a grenade jump to skip the bridge. Now the goal is to jump over these spikes, but I kind of messed up and had to recover, but it still works. If you do the skip you want to head to this area to activate Claptrap on the other side. Skyrocket makes killing Boom Boom really easy. Once we're done with that, we shoot the gate and immediately jump off of the ship. We're going to these bully monks to complete the Bad Hair Day quest now. So, 
Once we have all the hair, we go back to Hammerlock and root only farm as a reward for Dayu. If you don't know what root only means or how you do it, I have a video on that on my channel which I'll link in the description. Additionally, I will have some other useful links down there which you can check out. Once I get to Dayu, we're off to farm Boom Boom for some XP. The goal is to get to level 9 by the time we kill Captain Flint, as this will scale the next map. So I farm to around 8.9 and put my points into Foresight, because I want to go down Cataclysm Tree first. Now getting to Flint is some skips I use, the first being a grenade drum from this house up to the cliff. The second one being after saving Claptrap. I use the chain to get up to the lever faster. After hoisting Claptrap, I jump through this little hole and run up towards the platform where Flint will be. After he spawns, I get him to jump down and face lock him in midair. This makes it very easy to hit the back of his head for easy crits. Now I just follow the mission until I meet Reese. I kill his attackers and once I get the objective to search the camp for the core, I shoot in that general area to get the psycho aggroed at me. He will always be the one who carries the core. The now after getting to Sanctuary, meeting Scooter and getting the two cells from him, I pick up the Assassin like the Assassin's Quest and get a grenade SU from Earl. Now this is important, I want to do the side quest before speaking to the guard at the headquarters. I want to get some more XP so the quest that comes after this one will be a higher level. So I make my way to South Bar. Finishing all four assassins should not be too hard, especially if you're not afraid to use the skyrocket indoors. After that, I found the first two assassins to around 12.4. This is to scale a side quest that we'll get to later to its highest possible level. I put the points I get into Foresight to max it out, then into Emily. Now we're ready to continue with the main story. We go to the HQ, get the Echo and head to Frostburn. On our way to the Firehawk, I grabbed Lusco, because it's just a really good SMG that I'll be using a lot in the near future. Meeting Lilith and doing her fight is where the level farming comes into play. We want to be level 13 by the time we turn this mission in. Uh. 
since it'll scale the in memoriam side quest we get from our afterwards to level 13, which is its max level. That's important because we'll be farming both for a fastball, and we want it to be its highest possible level. Before we grab the quest from Lilith, I do Marcus's quest, but I don't finish it. I stop when I get to the slag gun, since I can use it to slag enemies early on. Now after finishing the mission and getting yourself a fastball, we move on with the story. We meet Ellie, get the car parts, and make our way back to the stronghold. Oh, also, you'll notice that I always used Barrel Technical throughout this run. That's just because it's faster than any other car. Yeah, I don't know why either. Anyway, we meet Badmore, introduce him to our fastball, and walk into the stronghold. Now it's time to farm for some more levels. Badmore is a really nice and fast XP farm. This is also one of the reasons I got the slag gun. If your fastball is anything but fire, it'll take two to kill Badmore, unless he is slag. I farm Badmore till around level 17. Some people farm him till 18, but I find it to be too slow, so I just move on after 17. Badmore can drop some decent gear and quite a bit of iridium, so make sure to pick those up if you see them. Now before I move on, I want to mention some items you want to look out for throughout this run. These don't really have a set drop location, so if you find any during your run, make sure to pick them up. First are banded launchers, they're a really good second wind gun, so it's good to have one on hand. Next things are cooldown relics. As the name implies, they reduce the cooldown of your action skill, which is always a good thing. Now the last two things are longbow and a loved zero fuse singularity. If you see either of those in a vendor, make sure to buy them, since they'll become useful later on. Now if you don't find a zero fuse one during your normal mode run, that's fine. Just pick one up that has a decent fuse time. If I don't get one during my run through normal mode, I farm one at a later point, so you can always get one then. Now once I'm level 17, I put my points into Immolate, Clarkill, and Chain Reaction. After that I go to Earl to buy some more grenades to use, and go to Rotcut Distillery to get an on-level Adaptive Shield. I like to use Adaptives throughout this run since the elemental resistance and extra health they give you is really nice. Now it's time to get through Bloodshot. Now I like to use the skip used in speedruns, but like I said in the intro, you can just go through it the normal way. Since we've harmed all those levels, we can just breeze through a lot of the upcoming missions. As I've rolled in from the big toaster, meet Mordecai, meet Tina, with the explosives in a way that doesn't alert any of the enemies in the camp, blow up the bridge, meet and kill Wilhelm, and get sanctuary in the air. Worry about me. Grab 
Once I get the three horns, I immediately turn around, go back into Sanctuary Hall and to the Caustic Caverns. This map will be important later on, so I want to get the fast travel unlocked early. Now when we get to the fridge, we can go into Fink's Slaughterhouse and farm the vendor there for some better gear. It's not necessary since the Lascaux should still be fine, but if you want to get a new sniper for example, this is the place to do it. Now I just run through the fridge, activate the fast travel station only to find that Sanctuary has been wiped out of the system. So I'll make my way through the next area. Now again, you can just go the normal way, take the crane or whatever. I just do two grenade jumps to skip right to the thresher. Which we can kill easily with the slack pistol and the skyrocket. Now on my way to Overlook, I make sure to activate this fast travel station, because I'll be using it a bit later on. The fight in Overlook is really nothing noteworthy. You can pull an Obi-Wan and use the high ground for an advantage, but other than that, nothing interesting happens. Once I'm back in Sanctuary, I want to do a few side quests just to get some more XP. Do not complete the main mission objective yet. As we did before, I want to level up a bit before accepting the next quest to scale it to a specific level. So we go to the bounty board and get both Clan Wars and the Good, the Bad and the Mordecai. We'll do Clan Wars right now and do Mordecai's quest a bit later on. Now Clan Wars is a mission chain and is mostly pretty straightforward. However, if you use some clever castrates, you can avoid driving around a whole bunch. So when you get to turning and end of the rainbow, you spawn both cars, but leave one in the Hodan camp. After driving with the other car to Steve, you teleport the first one, do the mission, teleport back to the second one to turn it back in, teleport back once more to get the new quest, teleport back one last time and drive to Lynchwood. Having Lynchwood unlocked now will make the farm at the end of this mission easier. From Lynchwood you could also just travel to Sanctuary and get drunk. Now crashing the wake is also as easy as can be. The game wants you to kill the enemies in the bar, but you really don't need to. You just walk in, get the chalk mark, and walk back out. Easy. Now when we get to the showdown, you travel to Lynchwood and go through the area transition to spawn directly next to the bosses. Firstly, we'll farm Tector for a slagger. Now as long as you only kill the boss and not also all of his goons, you can save good and refarm them without having to complete the mission. This way we'll get both the slagger from Tector and be able to farm Mick for a Maggie and XP. This is exactly what we'll do. After getting the slag, I complete the quest by killing Mick, then farm him using the slag and the fast ball for Maggie's, and not until I reach level 23. Now if you don't get a Maggie before you reach 23, which is unlikely, but can still happen, just farm until you get one. Now once we're done with this, we go back to Sanctuary, talk to our friends and get the Doctor's Orders quest from Tannis. Before going to Wildlife, I spec out of Cloudkill, just to make the fight before the door a bit easier. Once at Wildlife, I get a new shield and go meet Mordecai. 
I damaged the three loaders and make my way through the map. at the area before the Bloodwing Feather, I killed the loot murders once just to see what I can get. In this case I got a conference call which I won't be using, as mentioned in the intro. Now I don't bother farming the midgets more, but if you want to, you can. I, was nearly done with my ship, you jackass. Gonna... Ah! I just make my way through the map, use a grenade jump to get out of bounds and skip this little fight, and get to Bloodwing. The first phase is easily dealt with with the Maggie, for the other two I just used Skyrocket on that stab mission. Now before going out and beating Brick, I get the Rackaholics Anonymous quest for Mordecai. It gives a nice moxie weapon as a reward which I will be using throughout most of normal mode in TVHM. Getting the barrels from the car can be made really simple. Just grab a car, leave the dust, go back in and the car will be stuck in place. Once that done, I found a turner at Moxie to get myself a matching grip slag ruby. Since it's a Moxie gun, it has the lifesteal effect, so when wielding it you gain 12% lifesteal to all damage dealt. After that we go meet Brick, do his initiation and protect his place, go to opportunity, take out the jack loan and get our voice changed. Yeah, not really much to talk about here. Hey, slab. But before going to the bunker, there are a couple things I want to do still. First, it's getting to level 25. I simply farm Mobley and Gettle for XP, that are unlocked after completing the good, the bad and the Mordecai mission. Also keep the XP relic you get. You can equip it instead of the Vault Hunter relic if you haven't found a cooldown one. Now it's possible that you'll get a Lyuda over Rook during this farm. If you do, you can obviously use either going forward. I will not use them, since I want to make this guide even for everyone. In any case, once I got to level 25, we'll be going to Scarlet DLC to get ourselves a class mod. Now I only play this DLC until I unlock the Grendel side mission, which is after meeting Scarlet. So we clear out the area, meet Shade, fix the boat, meet Scarlet, and go back to Oasis to get the quest from the bounty board. Once we have that, I'll make my way to the Hades Folly to complete it. I don't bother finishing the Sandman quest yet, as I'll be doing that later on in the run. For now I just want the class mod. I found the turn in for a blood trickster with plus 4, enchant reaction and plus 3 in kinetic reflection. If you get a plus 3 in life tab that's fine too. Now we're ready for the bunker. Bunker is really not that difficult. Really the main thing doing damage here will be clap kill. So I just kill the first constructor, jump up on these rocks to avoid the mortars. Kill the two turrets, run up behind the badass constructor, and kill it from behind cover.
then it's off to the actual boss. Killing the 11 turrets shouldn't be an issue, just be careful to not fall off or die to the laser. Bunker itself is easy as well, just phase lock an enemy so that chain reaction activates and you should do decent damage. Now comes the most fun part of the story, Control Core Angel. It's just 15 minutes of boring mobbing, not too much to say about that. Nothing really important happens anyway. I'm going after Jack. The chest room after is the same as the midgets. You can farm this with a read only, but I usually don't bother. Once we get out I get the safe and sound quest for Marcus. We'll turn this into Moxie as well to get the Heartbreaker. Now for this you want to travel to the Caustic Heavens. This is why we came here earlier. Go out to the Sanctuary Hall, up the stairs until you hit the trigger, back into the caverns and over to Blue. After getting the images, I found the turn in for a matching grip Heartbreaker. After that, it's off to Iridium Blight. I follow the mission until I get to Sawtooth, but I don't complete the map just yet. First, it's time to get some more levels. There are two main ways people get levels here. Personally, I farm Mobley and Gettle. Other people just kill King Mong over and over. I usually farm to around level 28. Some people like to push it all the way to 30. It's really your call. Now as mentioned before, if you farm Mobley and Gettle, it's possible to get a Layuda of a Rook. But for the sake of this guide, I won't be using either. Once that's done, I go back to Sawtooth and get myself a better adaptive shield from the vendor there, and it's time to fight. Sawtooth has a reputation for giving people some problems, but with the way I do it, it usually works out fine. I jump down the side of the cliff to get right to the entrance, clear out all the enemies next to the elevator, then call the button to have the commander spawn. Once they are dealt with, you can go the normal way around, or you can use a grenade jump to skip all of that. I kill all the enemies in that area and make use of a very weird trigger. If you jump in this corner, it counts towards the mission progression and skips it forward. Again, don't ask me why it's a thing, it just is. Then I grenade jump up to the pipe and make my way to the buzzard, that way to avoid aggroing the enemies up there. I have to run a bit into the camp to update the objective, but once the buzzard is dealt with, I just go back the way I came from. Mortar is easy to kill and five buzzards should not be an issue either. After that we go to the Boneyard. Now once here I turn the mission in and travel to Sanctuary to get the This Just In mission from Mordecai. This is where the singularity comes in useful. I never actually take the elevator up to the enemy. I just throw the singularity at the floor to aggro Helquist that way and make him jump down. This prevents the Lotus from spawning after the mission is completed. You can farm for a decent P. I usually just take the first one that drops. If you're not too confident, I'd recommend getting one that you can use immediately. But if you can handle a bit of non-B combat, you can take a level 29 one as well. Now on to the pumping stations. I go to the first one, set the elevator down, spawn both cars, take one to the station across, hit the valves, and then teleport to the other car to save some time. The last pumping station can be a bit scary because enemies with rocket launchers can spawn here. So look out for those, they'll really ruin your day if you're not careful. Once that's done I do another skip to avoid going through the pipe. Once in Badlands I go and do the Uncle Teddy mission from the bounty board. If you turn that into Una, it gives you the Lady Fist, a pistol with 800% crit damage. Yeah, that's balanced. 
Now here I'm looking for a decent non-element lady fist. Decent meaning either banded, Hyperion, flat of grip, and preferably a side. Once I got that, it's off to center. Killing him should not be difficult. Just use either the B and the Slagger or Layuda if you have one. This little hut is a perfect hiding spot to be safe from most of his attacks. For the enemies going forward, I'll be using the B and Lady Fist combo since that's balanced. Once we have the location of the warrior, we're ready to finish the game. Well, not quite. First I want to get some more levels, so back to Saturn we go. I found Saturn to around level 31 to unlock the capstone of the Cataclysm Tree. I use a grenade jump to get the Saturn faster, but you can just go the normal way around as well. Now back at Sanctuary, I get the final quest and make my way to Claptrap and Iridium Blight. I save good after talking to him to skip dialogue. The fight at the door itself should not be that hard. I usually hide behind this container to get some cover. The main thing to look out for are the badass surveys. With that done, we're on to the second to last map. Now here's pass is nothing special. The only thing to pay attention to are enemies with rocket launchers, as to not have them surprise you. You can of course follow Heroes Pass the intended way and get to the vault like that, but to speed it up I use some skips here and there. You may notice that there's no lava in my vault. This is simply a side effect of using DXVK. The lava is still there and will very much burn me, it's just invisible. Killing Jack and the warrior is extremely easy with the Lady Fist and B-Shield. I approach Jack from the side here to have a better angle on him during the fight, and to have some cover for when finding the warrior. Once the warrior falls, you're tasked with hitting the moonshot button to kill it. There's a thing to note about this though. Warrior has 7 dedicated drops. The conference call, the flacker, the volcano, the leech, the impaler, random blue relics and a skin. During this mission objective, the warrior will drop one of his drops every time. If you kill him normally, it's only a 10% chance for one. So this is why we use read only to find this mission objective for any specific drop, since it makes it 10 times more likely to get. In this case, I farm until I get a fire conference call. This gun will be useful way later into the run, but it's good to get it out of the way early. You can also get it during the TVHM or UVHM start. Run. I just like to get it as early as possible. Now once you have that done, we can kill Jack and we are done. Well, not quite. There are quite a few things I do now before starting TVHM. First is getting some XP. Warrior is a really good XP farm, so I do that until I reach level 35. During this you get a ton of Iridium as well, which is nice for quite a few SDUs. Don't even think. 
think about bringing that one back. Once that's done, I go back in the Scarlet DLC to progress it further until I get to the side mission, which will give me the Pimpernel. Killing Sandman is easy because this area is still scaled to level 25. To get them a bit quicker, I use two grenade jumps, but you can just go with the intended way. Now for the second piece, I'm using a similar strategy as in Clan Wars. I spawn two boats, keep one by Scarlet, use the other one to get the piece, travel back to the first one, get the next mission and the gift, travel back to the boat on the far side, and get to the Rust Yards. Once there, I use a grenade jump to jump over the gate and a safe route that goes up and over the enemies to avoid them. Then we have to get the tapes for Herbert. This mission sends you all over the map, but there are a few ways to make it a bit faster, or safer. The first being to jump over this fence to get down to the objective faster. Once I get the first tape, I go back up to Herbert and use a grenade jump to get up to the boat. This is to avoid having to go through the camp back by the first tape. So now I can just get the rest of the tapes and go back to Herbert. We're almost done with this DLC for now. Last thing we have to do is get to the refinery. Once there, I grab the mission from Sansabot, complete it, and grab the second one, yes. This is the one we're after. Now I recommend you simply leave through the area transition to do the quest, because then you can just save quit and spawn right back at the refinery. Then it's time to find this reward. Here I'm looking for a matching grip fire pimpernel. It'll not only be useful for the early parts of TVHM, but it'll also be used during the grind to level 80 later on. Once I have that, we go to Lynchwood. I complete the first two missions here to get the last one, where you fight the sheriff. The sheriff has a chance to drop the sheriff's badge relic, which is extremely useful. Now I like to do this part on read only, since if you do it after the mission ends, you have enemies spawn on your way to the sheriff. I usually take the first sheriff's badge I get here. If I get a bad one right now, I can come back later and farm a better one. Then I read only farm the turn in to get myself a perfect deputy's badge. Though that relic is not as important on Maya, but it can be useful in some situations, and since it only has four variants, getting a perfect one is not difficult. The last thing to get done in normal mode is to get a couple more level. The goal is to get around 37.4. This is specifically to scale a mission later in TVHM. To do that, I use the snowman headhunter, since the boss gives good XP and the train can have some really good loot. This headhunter is really short and straightforward. The only thing to know is that when you kill the snowman during the mission, you can actually kill him again after turning the mission in, without having to save quit. After that kill, you'll have to save quit every time though. The loot train you get after every kill can have some really good items in it. The main thing I'm looking out for here are banded launchers, a better adaptive shield, a cooldown relic, and the singularity grenades I mentioned at the start. Which is why I have my badass rank disabled and will not be using any world traps that I get.
And that's that. Now we're ready for TVHM. I hope this guide could help some of you and you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure to like and subscribe to not miss the TVHM upload. Thanks for watching and I'll see you around.